My name is Greg Weber. I am uh, going to be uh, helping you all work together. Uh, some people call it a facilitator. I'm just here to help you work more efficiently. This is a working meeting. An amazing group of talent has been assembled. I was honored to be invited uh, into your midst to help you uh, attempt to accomplish what I think is a very ambitious agenda. Uh, you all should have had emailed to you, if you were on the RSVP list, you should have had emailed to you a copy of the agenda. There were additional copies outside if you didn't bring one or you don't have one uh, with you. I put a very high level two-day agenda up on the side wall there, um, but really we'll be referring to the detailed agenda. Um, I'd like to just briefly introduce myself and then uh, get the meeting started. I am a professor of law at the University of Pacific McGeorge School of Law in Sacramento, where my specialty is water resources law. And um, I, for the last seven years, my family and I have been proud to make Mount Shasta, California our home. Both of our daughters graduated from Mount Shasta High, and we're um, just so happy to live in this beautiful part of the world. I just want to get a quick show of hands as to where people are from, because I know we've got people who come a fair long uh, distance. So how many of you are from out of California, some state other than California? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so about a half dozen of you. How many of you are from California but not Siskiyou County? Most of you. Well, welcome to our part of the world. I'm sure you, you know it pretty well, but for those who haven't been here before, we're all happy to welcome you. And then last but not least, who like me are, uh, uh, live in Siskiyou County? Oh, very good. So welcome neighbors. I'm so glad to see you here. So um, the purpose of this meeting is I think all of you understand, but just so that we're, we're clear, it's to understand fish. That's what it's about, more particularly fish genetics, and even more particularly fish genetics as it uh, implicates possibilities for supplementation of uh, coho salmon in the Shasta River and in some of the um, uh, adjoining uh, streams. So this is a working meeting. I don't see um, many public observers here, but in the event that there are some, just want to make clear, this is a working meeting of researchers and public resource uh, resources professionals. Again, to understand, the only purpose of this meeting is to understand fish genetics so that people can make intelligent decisions at some other time, in some other forum, in some other um, process um, about the coho population in this part of the world. No decisions are being made. No votes are being taken. This is not a meeting about the National Marine Fisheries Services draft uh, uh, sock recovery plan, although there are people here who are working on that and the things that are talked about here will be of, of much interest to them. There is no preferred solution. I, um, I'm amazed that the, the, both the assembled talent here, but also the conveners of this group. I wonder if people could raise their hand if you've participated in one or more planning meetings over the last six months to get this workshop going. All right, it, look, just look around. There's a tremendous range of talent, perspective, and interest among you. And I am completely confident in saying that there is no agreement among you on a lot of issues. So uh, there is no preferred solution. You have widely different views. And that's great. That's what meetings like this are all about here. Um, we uh, have uh, opened, you have opened the doors to the two public observers. This really is a rare opportunity for the interested public to listen and to, to learn from the experts in the field here. There will be time on the end of each day's agenda for questions from the public observers. Uh, so keep your questions until then. There, if you've got a heart-pounding question or a question that you just don't think you're gonna be able to remem remember to the end of the day, 
I put a, a chart up on the back uh, says question bank and there's a, a marker next to it there. Please feel free to write a question up there and uh, um, I'll post them up on the back wall so during the course of the day if there are unanswered questions from the public we can all look at them and uh, if they can be addressed in the course of, of the proceedings that's fine. If not there will be time at the end of the day. Now, here's the absolute, absolute hardest part of running this meeting, and that's you all. You know who I'm talking about, all of you. Here's the problem. I love <coughs> learning about water resources. Like pretty much all of you in this room, um, I've dedicated my career to water resources. Um, I would be happy to listen to pretty much any one of you talk and teach me about what you know, which is a whole lot more about your subject area than mine. The dilemma is that there are so many people here who know so much and we've crammed so much into a short, really short two-day session that I'm going to have to ask all of you, both presenters and people in the audience, to um, agree that we're going to have to move on. Even though we've got a great conversation going, there's been a great presentation that you know we could listen to for another 40 minutes, um, we're going to have to move on. There will be a time, the, the, the order of the agenda, which was negotiated among all of you very carefully, has a series of presentations leading up to panel discussions. So I will, I, I have to be somewhat ruthless um, about moving us forward. So if you, you have a question, it doesn't get answered, there is the panel discussion at the end of each day. We've got a fairly robust time for discussion. So that's the opportunity, uh, um, again, to, to raise some of these issues. Let's go ahead then and bring our welcomers up. We've got uh, four folks who've um, agreed to welcome you here. I've got Jim Cook, uh, Siskiyou County Supervisor. Jim, if you could come up. Jim Morris from the Siskiyou County Farm Bureau. Uh, Curtis Mill Iron from the Department of Fish and Game. And Irma Lagamarsino from the National Marine Fisheries Service. If I could get all four of you up here, that'd be great. And I'll introduce you one at a time. Come on up. Just right up here would be fine. Uh, right in front of the table, Jim, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm gonna have you stand, so. Okay, so um, I've got Jim Cook, uh, many of you know, he's a, a Siskiyou County Supervisor here. Uh, in prior incarnations of his life, he was a local community grant uh, writer, a uh, wildlife biologist, and at one time had the largest venison farm here in California. He's uh, got a, a background in biology, both as a, a bachelor and a master's of science. So please welcome Jim Cook. All right, Jim, uh, I give the mic to you, and then I'll introduce the, the others uh, after you're done. Thank you very much. I'm here on behalf of the citizens of Siskiyou County to welcome you and to thank you for coming to this workshop. Uh, the importance of this workshop is uh, well understood in our local communities and it has engendered uh, quite a bit of interest in our local citizens, from our local citizens. And I would also uh, like to point out that we all know that uh, unlike many symposiums and workshops we've all attended in the past, that this workshop is going to almost immediately have direct impact on not just the citizens but on the actual recovery of uh, salmonid species in our uh, region. So once again, I'd like to uh, welcome you for being here. I know some of you co have come a long way and uh, we greatly appreciate this workshop. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. Okay, next up is uh, Jim Morris from the Siskiyou County Farm Bureau. Uh, Jim also has a background, uh, uh, education in biology, as well as a minor in geology from Southern Oregon uh, University, where my, my daughter Alyssa is attending. 
Uh, and he also has a secondary teaching credential in agriculture and earth science. He works, lives and works on a hay, grain, and cattle ranch that the Scott River runs through. The ranch has been in his family for over 150 years, and they're looking forward to the next 150. Please welcome Jim Morris. Thank you. I'll, I'll try to make this brief. Um, like you just heard, I live on a ranch that has been in our family for a long time, and, and we've seen fish numbers decline over time, and that troubles us. And we'd like to explore opportunities to see the fish numbers come back. We feel like we have a right to a bountiful supply of fish, also returns that come back to our area. There has been a lot of um, troubling uh, discourse that's happened over the last few years about fish, and I think it's divided our communities, our agency people and our people that uh, live here. I think that's a bad thing. I would like to see our communities be brought back together around some sort of a concept that can make us all work together and feel good about what we do and feel good about the resource. I hope that today we have an opportunity to begin discussing that. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, staying in front of you, is uh, Irma Laga Marcina. She's from the National Marine Fisheries Service. She is the Northern California Office Supervisor. Prior to her work in Arcata for the last uh, 10 plus years, she served for 10 years in a Long Beach at a staff, as a staff biologist down there. She is a biologist by training and also by, uh, by education. So please welcome uh, Irma Lagomarsino, please. Thanks, Greg. I was on the planning committee, but I understand that uh, it's uh, California Department of Fish and Game, as well as ourselves, Siskiyou County, and the Nature Conservancy. The Nature Conservancy, the, the Farm Bureau. The Farm Bureau, and Jim, thank quite, you. Okay. Quite a number of groups. The um, tribes have been involved. Yes, and I, and I it's my first remark is that thank you um, to the organizing committee for having the, the fortitude and the vision to bring such a diverse group of folks together. And I see tribal folks in the audience. I see agency folks. I see... Uh, folk landowners, um, and, and I think that um, that's that's a good start. Um, there's a there's a very challenging resource uh, opportunity here in Siskiyou County, and I think we all we're all about making sure that we do what we can to bring the coho back, as well as help maintain a sustainable community here for the folks who live and work and play in the Shasta Valley, as well as the rest of Siskiyou County. So that's certainly why why we are here. Um, the purpose of the workshop uh, co is coho augmentation uh, appropriate? If it is appropriate, um, what type of augmentation is appropriate? What scale um, that that will provide the greatest benefits and really have the pose the least risk to the species? And I, I think that's really kind of the heart of of the, the subject of the next couple of days. And it's a it's a challenging task. Um, and I, I do want to thank also the scientists that are here. Uh, we know uh, you're taking time out of your, your busy research schedules uh, to come and join us for the uh, sharing what, what you know on uh, your expertise about the genetics of, of coho and, and uh, how augmentation might influence uh, the, the natural run. So we thank you very, very much for that. And, uh, and I especially want to thank Siskiyou County uh, for supporting the workshop. I know uh, things can be awkward at times, and I, I do think just us being here together is just a, it's a small step, uh, but it's an important one, and I think that we could do a lot over the next couple days. I uh, could go in the other direction too, but I certainly hope that uh, we're still together here and, and, and the meeting is very, very productive. So thanks. Thank you, Irma. Let me introduce Curtis. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So. Um, our fourth uh, welcomer here is Curtis Milliron. Uh, Curtis is a senior biologist with the California Department of Fish and Game. He's worked with um, Fish and Game for nearly three decades. Uh, 21 were in the Eastern Sierra and four down in uh, Sacramento, and he's currently the Northern Region Fisheries Program Manager. Please welcome Curtis Milliron, please. 
Thank you and welcome everyone and thank you for the opening comments by my co-welcomers. I think they're just spot on and, and very appropriate. So just want to say a, a few things. Um, so coho salmon, as we all know, have been declining in California towards extinction. But uh, just north of California, there's still a harvest is still practiced. And really that's the goal for fishing game is to get the abundance of coho to such a point that we can once again enjoy the bounty of this this natural resource. There's very good reasons to believe that coho can become abundant again in California, and I think in large part to many of the folks that are here today that have been involved in the recovery, and, uh, and especially want to thank the landowners and the people that live on the land with the water and the fish themselves, that, that, that we're really, us as a whole and the, and the community is the answer to how we could restore coho. So today we're going to learn a lot I think, about the lives of Coho and the Upper Klamath and the Shasta. And we're going to focus on some of the challenges they, they face. But, you know, as we've heard, the focus of this workshop is really about the supplementation, that the fact that the numbers of Coho are just too low, and then especially in the Shasta, may be so low that on their own they may not be able to recover. During this workshop, we're going to be engaged in discussions on the genetic status of coho in the Shasta and the Klamath rivers. We're going to hear the latest results from modern genetic science. That's pretty exciting because, uh, I mean, many of us have been aware of these studies, but we actually here at this workshop, we're going to hear for the first time some of the, the breaking news of where we stand with coho genetics, especially relative to the Shasta River. Then we're going to see presentations on techniques to increase coho numbers. And, and I think it's important that we recognize that we need to do this in light of uh, that the continuation of the selection processes that allow the adaptation of coho to the Shasta River need to continue. We don't want to uh, we want don't want to move forward in a, in a manner that would limit coho or force coho in a direction that isn't going to adapt well to these environments. Having more coho in the river is also going to benefit us by helping us understand the limiting factors. Where are these fish going to go? Are they going to survive as juveniles and are they going to return as adults? These are just some of the questions that many of the scientists in this room are working on. Great uh, conservationist and philosopher Elder Leopold said the first rule of intelligent tinkering is to save all the pieces. So. I think that it's important that we recognize that we may still have unique genetics in the river and that's part of our discussion challenge today and tomorrow. That we don't want to lose the genetic material that we have out there. We want to add to it. We want to work with it. Well, I'm looking forward to a great exchange and I appreciate everybody being here. Looking forward to your ideas, your on point, how did you say it, uh, burning questions or very heart pounding heart questions. Pounding questions heart pounding questions. Heart pounding questions. And a great discussion. So thank you. Thank you. Thank all of you. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, um, I think we're ready to begin here. So, uh, for the uh, morning here, we're going to hear a series of five overviews that basically get a get us grounded. This is particularly designed for the folks who are coming from out of state or from out of the region. They don't work in the watershed. So it'll be a, a good kind of um, a grounding also for those of us uh, who are here or who work here. So we're gonna look at, try and get an understanding of what the, the coho population status is in uh, Southern Oregon and Northern California and then zero in down a, a little bit more specifically on current conditions in the watersheds that are of most interest to the folks in this workshop, that the Shasta, of course, but also as relevant the Scott and the Upper Klamath.